Welcome to the Fallon Forum. That's Brother Trucker, Andy Fleming, and their tune, Downtown. I uh, went to hear Andy and, uh, and Brother Trucker at the uh, Jasper Winery last night. You know, there's always so much going on on Thursday nights. Uh, there's uh, square dancing and swing dancing at the lake. There's drinking liberally. There's green drinks. There's all sorts of great th- things that go on on a regular basis. I'd never made it to the uh, Thursday concert series at Jasper Winery. And it was a blast, uh, just packed with people, packed with people, kids running everywhere, having a great time, and fantastic music with, uh, with our friends, uh, Brother Trucker. I want to thank the uh, Iowa chapter of the Sierra Club and also Iowa Physicians for Social Responsibility and the Great March for Climate Action for sponsoring the Fallon Forum. And in particular, I want to mention uh, Gateway Marketing Cafe. That's uh, my uh, business sponsor for this segment of the show. I also want to thank all the other businesses that make this program possible. And uh, I'll look, uh, look at the lay of the land today. Later in the program, Ying Sa is going to join us. We're going to talk about the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit. We're also going to take a uh, look at uh, Steve Colbert's take on the food uh, stamp program and how Congress has handled that. I mean, Colbert is good. He's cutting and he's always, uh, he's, he's funny and he's always got something important to say in between the, uh, the laugh lines. Um, we're going to take a look at how agriculture is being affected by climate change uh, right out of the mouths of Iowa's farmers. But first, we're going to talk about the, um, the latest crazy talk from Congressman Steve King. And uh, I am launching a campaign to find a moderate Republican. And yes, I know you're out there. A moderate Republican. Gosh, even a slightly conservative Republican would be fine. Somebody who just would agree not to embarrass Iowa on a regular basis and who would agree not to spew hatred and racism and all the other crazy things that we have unfortunately become very, very accustomed to here in Iowa uh, coming from Steve King. In fact, the entire country has become accustomed to Steve King and um, he's become a regular uh, person to jab at uh, on the national uh, circuit. Uh, I mean, John Stewart has, of course, had his say about him. Uh, so has Steve Colbert. And in response to um, King's most recent uh, tirade, again, uh, this was where he said, for every one of these illegal immigrants who's a valedictorian, there's another hundred out there <laughs> that are drug dealers. Um, he's been He's been criticized roundly from from the leadership of his own party, even Branstead, I mean, Branstead's criticism is very timid, which, which is what we would expect, I suppose, but pretty strong criticism from uh, John Boehner, from Eric Cantor, and from Steve Colbert. Again, making it funny, but in the, in the, again, in between all the laugh lines, you get a sense of just what, uh, what an embarrassment this guy is to Iowa. Honey, I got this. We got this, right? Dry cleaning done. Gift for your aunt. Done. Today we're going to be talking about your body after baby. Yep, we're done. Okay, let's get some lunch. Okay, so yes! Wells Fargo is not a sponsor of the Fallon Forum, but we're going to hopefully get through this ad really soon. And while it's <clears throat> while it's running its course, I will remind you to support local credit unions. Local banks phone, uh, keep your money here in the community the where we'll Wells do a lot Fargo of. I know, I know, I know. Wells Fargo has done. a business here, but again, keep it here. And here's hey, Colbert. Welcome back, everybody, folks. After losing the Hispanic vote in 2012, the GOP wants to appeal to immigrants, and the Republican secret weapon is Iowa Congressman and mortuary training doll Steve King. <laughs> On Monday, Congressman King warned us about the real dangers of granting citizenship to young illegals through the DREAM Act. They aren't all valedictorians. They weren't all brought in by their parents. Uh, For everyone who's a valedictorian, there's another hundred out there that um, they weigh 130 pounds and they've got calves the size of cantaloupes because they're hauling 75 pounds of marijuana across the desert. Those people would be legalized with the same act. Come on, we all say it behind closed doors. Mexicans have calves the size of cantaloupes, <laughs> all right? Or honeydews, what have you. A breakfast fruit of some kind. A papaya or a particularly large grapefruit, whatever. 
And one of the best ways to choose who gets into this country is by what size produce their muscles are. <laughs> the point is, it's all about choosing the good ones. Steve King knows that. You want a good bird dog, and you want one that's going to be aggressive? Pick the one that's the friskiest, the one that's engaged the most, and not the one that's over there sleeping in the corner. You get the pick of the litter, and you've got yourself a pretty good bird dog. Well, we got the pick of every donor civilization on the planet. Unbelievably, los Latinos were offended by the immigrants as dogs analogy. Those people have such thin coats. <laughs> One of the people offended was friend of the show, Univision anchor, Jorge Ramos. Congressman, you recently compared immigrants to dogs. No, and, I didn't. And, 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 and That's as, a mischaracterization. Well, uh, did you watch the video, the full video? That speech was about celebrating legal immigration. It, it I was, was celebrating it was not a celebration legal immigration. And was, anyone that understands the language and the culture knows that if they saw the video. It, yeah, if you weren't such a foreigner, you'd get it. Take the jumping beans out of your ears, Pedro. <laughs> Try again. So from your point of view, you actually did not compare immigrants to dogs. That's, I, I said that speech was about the vigor of legal immigration. It was a very complimentary speech. And no, I, I, don't think I did not many, do that. I, I don't... Yes. When he was comparing immigrants to dogs, which he did not do, he was complimenting them. <laughs> the same way I'm complimenting Steve King when I call him a tool. <laughs> meaning, meaning, that's a celebration, okay? Meaning a useful implement with which to say, roof a house. <laughs> By the way, Steve King believes roof is the Spanish word for hello, as in roof roof. <laughs> so, please, it's not about Mexicans being animals. Steve King is just saying they are human beings who, if you pick the right ones, would make great pets. <laughs> I've already got one digging in my yard. <laughs> Luis is loyal, he's a member of my family, and at the first sign of hip dysplasia, I will send him to a farm upstate. <laughs> Literally, I got a lot of string beans growing up there. We'll be right back. I'm sorry, that is just too funny and also too pointed. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted to have uh, Amner Martinez in the studio with me. Um, <laughs> had you seen that previously? No, I, this is the first time I see it. Yeah. I, I watch Colbert all the time, but... Uh, yeah, that's, that's a fresh one. That's, that's, that's hot off the press. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, I hope Steve King had a chance to watch that as well. Uh, I, just astounding to me. Again, I, I, I love it when news commentators can... I uh, find humor in something that really, uh, there's, there's nothing funny about Steve King, but, you know, using his own words, you can show just how bizarre and absurd the guy is. And I mean, we have a very serious effort underway here to pass immigration reform. It has received bipartisan interest. It's moving in Congress. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but the fact that they're talking about something, doing something is uh, a step forward. And here in Des Moines, as, as we've seen across the country, there are a growing number of rallies, of uh, educational events, of various activities that are trying to get people to understand the importance of this step forward. And you're involved with a rally coming up tomorrow. I am. I am. <clears throat> excuse me. I am. Uh, I'm uh, on a volunteer basis. Uh, um, I was approached um, by uh, the organizers and, um, you know, I, you know, couldn't be more happier than be a part of it. Uh, being myself an immigrant. Um, and where are you, you from? Know, I'm from Guatemala. My parents okay. are from Guatemala. And, uh, so, you know, I, I want to be a part of this. I think it's very important. I, I think that Colbert and uh, John, John Stewart do a great job. And I think we need that. You know, we need that laughter in, in between. Um, but, you know, the words that and the language that this... Um, politicians are using are poisonous yeah you know they're they're uh, poisoning the, the 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 minds of the young uh children you know that that are coming up right now and that's you know and that's just something that needs to be addressed well, well not all politicians i mean it, it's rare on the fallon forum that we have something generous to say about uh speaker of the u.s house john boehner but uh, he already, I mean, just yesterday, I believe, or maybe it was the day before, I believe yesterday he came out in very strong language criticizing Congressman King. And then yesterday at a uh, press conference at the, at, the, at, the, at the United States Capitol, um, he 
came out in at least equally strong language. He said, I want to be clear. This is Boehner speaking. I want to be clear. There's no place in this debate for hateful or ignorant comments from elected officials. And he's not making a generalization. He's saying that about Steve King. He's saying that Steve King's comments were hateful and they're ignorant. He goes on to say, earlier this week, uh, Representative Steve King made comments that were, I think, deeply offensive and wrong. Um, and then he goes on to say what he does, what he what he says does not reflect the values of the American people or the Republican Party. And that part I found interesting. We all need to do our work in a constructive, open and respectful way. I mean, King is just getting it, getting criticism from from places that you normally would never see that happen. I mean, and that is unprecedented for the leader uh, of, of your party. Um, in, 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 a, in a chamber where, you know, fraternity is, is second nature to come out and criticize you not once but twice and in very, very strong language. Now, Boehner, of course, was asked about sanctions against King, about dumping him from his leadership position. He uh, declined to do that, which I think shows a little bit of a lack of backbone. But, but the fact that he's criticizing him like this, the fact that Eric Cantor is saying similar things, um, I, I mean, I, I think that's a good sign. That is a good sign, uh, and it is appreciated when uh, um, us Latinos, we see uh, somebody from his own party, um, a leader um, like Mr. Boehner, um, criticize him. Uh, we would like to see more. Uh, some um, are not so uh, clear on their words. Um, but I ask myself, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how many terms has... Uh, Mr. King has six. Served. He's been ele- he's been elected six um, times, and obviously that second video on on that clip was from two thousand and six, I believe. Uh, perhaps, yeah, that sounds right. Um, so you know he keeps he's still you know getting uh, voted in. So um, I think that uh, the voters um, should also hold some responsibility. Um, because they are voting this man into office, right? And and here's the, here's something that people don't often understand. Uh, I think people realize that the fourth congressional district is, by and large, a fairly solid Republican seat. Uh, it's as solid a Republican seat as you could say the first or second district are Democratic seats. E- even more solid. It is the most partisan district in the state. A Republican is going to represent the fourth congressional district. And, and I say that with all due respect for the Democrats that have tried to run and beat King. And there have been some great candidates um, who have been uh, wonderful people. Uh, good messages. In the case of Christy Vilsack, uh, well-funded as well. I mean, she had a lot of money behind her. She also had a new district to work from. Uh, That new district includes Story County. People were thinking, okay, the margin is closer. Republicans don't have as big a, you know, voter, uh, voter registration advantage. Maybe somebody with the credentials of a Christy Vilsack, a former state uh, first lady, uh, with a huge campaign, you know, uh, a treasury chest, maybe she could beat him. She still loses by eight percentage points. I mean, I, I think it's time for the Democratic Party to wake up and say, OK, we can't beat this guy in the general ele- general election. But here's what people forget. And you, you have, you've only you've been here not not long enough to remember this. But back in 2002, when Steve King was was elected, he won by only 19 votes. Now, what happened was. There were, there were I, think, I think, four candidates in the, in the Republican primary. It was a new district. Steve King was in the House or in the Senate. Uh, we, we served together in the uh, Iowa legislature. And uh, he was one of four candidates that ran. Nobody got 35%. If no one gets 35% of the vote in a primary, it goes to convention, meaning all the, every precinct in that district sends two delegates to a special convention to decide who the nominee is going to be. King only won. There were several hundred showed up. I can't remember how many now. I want to say it was around, around uh, 600, four, five, between 500 and 600 people showed up. And King won by only 19 votes over a very reasonable and I think very likable uh, uh, Brent Segrist. Brent Segrist was the, uh, was the uh, speaker of the Iowa House. He was a majority leader. He's now running for mayor of Council Bluffs after having gone to work with the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, area education associations. I remember Brent Segrist, even when he was the leader in the House, voting against the official English bill. I mean, this guy gets it. And he, I mean, again, we don't agree on everything, but I mean, he's, he's very respectable. He won by a lot when he would run. 
Um, he's running for mayor now. Uh, unfortunately, he's no longer in that district. I mean, that Council Bluffs is no longer part of the uh, fourth district. Or I would be strongly encouraging Brent Segrist to consider running. But there are other Republicans out there that are reasonable, moderate, maybe even moderate to conservative, who are not going to embarrass Iowa. And, you know, the Democratic Party is not going to recruit them. They're just not going to do that. You know, maybe Karl Rove is trying to recruit somebody. Maybe Doug Gross is trying to. But I think the best way to get somebody on the ballot to challenge King in the primary next June, June 3rd, is for the grassroots to rise up and say, we've had enough. Let's get this done. Let's find somebody to take him on in the primary. I think it can be done. Again, you've got the uh, the hardcore, you know, folks who, for what, you know, what Steve King says to them is red meat. They're going to run with that. They like that. They're going to vote for him even if, uh, even if, even if everyone else abandons him. But there's... There's a big chunk within the Republican Party that don't like that, that want to vote for somebody else. And then you consider all the independents that might be attracted to that primary, maybe some Democrats as well. It's the only chance we have to beat King. I mean, I, clearly, we've, we, I, no, no offense to the Democrat running this year. I, I, hope, I hope he does a, does, does a fine job. hope he raises the right issues. But historically, you know, this would be the seventh time Democrats have tried to beat him. And this time with a lot less money (laughs) than the last time, it ain't going to happen. I'm just throwing a dose of political reality at you, folks. It ain't going to happen. If Steve King is going to get beat, it's going to take a primary opponent. Let's go find that opponent. Let's, uh, let's, I mean, people run for office because somebody says, hey, you'd be good at this. That's why I ran. Somebody recruited me. Well, recruited is the wrong word. They encouraged me to run. It wasn't, and it wasn't a party official, no surprise there. It was, just, it was another grassroots activist who felt I'd do a good job. That's how a lot of people decide to run. Somebody or a number of people, or maybe a lot of people, ask them to do it. Let's figure out who the best candidates might be to run against Steve King. Let's get going on this. There is a Facebook page created. Um, <clears throat> and now I'm blanking on the name of it, Maddie. Maybe you can help me remember. Um, <laughs> I created it this morning, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, something about finding a primary opponent for Steve King. I will find that for you after the break, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. But before we um, before we run to a break, I do want to um, I do want to remind people to support the businesses, organizations, and events that make this show possible. Go to my website FallonForum.com. You'll see reference to businesses like Tally's Restaurant, Bar, and Catering in Beaverdale, where you've got sitting on the roof, sitting on the roof, and on the sidewalk, and, and great food. Uh, some of my other restaurant supporters include Fighting Burrito at 13th and Locust in downtown Des Moines. Uh, yeah, you've got the Italian festival happening down there. And if for some reason you think you'd like a burrito instead, it's just a, just a stone's throw away. Also, Ritual Cafe at that same corner, 13th and Locust. And Hawk Restaurant. Hawk Restaurant is at East 5th and Walnut in the East Village. So again, thank all the businesses that make this show possible. And Gateway Market as well, folks. Gateway Market and Cafe is also... <clears throat> a place where you can get a great breakfast, lunch, or supper. I had lunch there yesterday with uh, Dan Kelly and Bob Krauss. I had a uh, kale salad, quinoa salad, and vegetarian lasagna. Yeah, not bad. Dan had a great-looking hamburger. Anyway, I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, I hope Omnic can stick around with us for a few more minutes. Yes, I, I can. I want to talk a little bit more about the rally. Um, but I tell you, uh, we have got to have a serious conversation about how we send Steve King into retirement. Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Well, good morning. This is the 7th of June in the Lord's year 2010, and this is day uno, one of webcast1live.com. We will begin with Max World Live with my special guest, Tom Coates. In just a minute, there's Tom Quake. Howdy. And uh, we will be live for the very first time on Webcast One Live.
someday we're going to look back on this and say, gosh, remember that old day in history? Wonder where Walter Cronkite was. He must have been around hanging there too. But actually, it's the beginning of Webcast 1 Live. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Rob Spearman and everybody who's put together this project together. And uh, we're ready to go live now. So thanks for listening to MaxWorldLive.com. I can't tell you that it's going real well from time to time, but it is going, man. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to the Fallon Forum. That's uh, Brother Trucker and their tune, Ode to Jones. Hey, um, that Facebook page I was talking about, which I can't believe I couldn't, couldn't remember the name, since I just created it this morning, it's called Draft a Moderate Republican to Beat Steve King. Again, I think it's the only way to beat Steve King. And I think uh, we I've talked about this for years. It's time to do it. And remember, the guy only won by 19 votes in 2002. He can be beaten, but it's got to be from the Republican side, in my opinion, not the Democratic side. Uh, let's talk a little bit more with uh, Omnir Martinez about the upcoming rally. Uh, Omnir is uh, from Guatemala. And uh, you um, you've been in the country how long? I've been in the United States since 1990. Oh, gosh. I You've been here a while. In 1990. How old um, were you? I was 10 years old. I'm 32 okay. now. Uh, and uh, my parents, my entire family, uh, we migrated here for, you know, just like everyone else, for better, you know, living, safer um, country. Uh, we do believe that, the uh, you know, America is the, the land of opportunity. Um, so we came here and... and uh, uh, to work and to study and to you know have a better future. Do you do you remember the trip well? Do you do you remember how many pounds of marijuana you had strapped to each leg? I don't leg remember. I think what what what, uh, what size fruit they were like. I, just, <laughs> I, I don't. My my dad just put a luggage on me, and then that's okay. all I did. Um, it's amazing <clears throat> to um, to hear the 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 words of 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 this uh, Mr. King. Um, you know, not every you know buddy's uh, uh, doing that. Uh, well, he, says, he says for every one of you that's a valedictorian, 100 of you are smuggling marijuana. Right. Where right. does he get this stuff from? I think he's getting it from the Discovery Channel. <laughs> Discovery Channel? <laughs> you think so? Maybe he's getting it from Fox News. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'd like to think a little bit more of the Discovery Channel than that. But. Um, you know, I will. there's so many stories. There's sad stories. People are dying on the border. Oh, gosh, um, yeah, you in know, Texas. People right walking now. the desert. They, they, they're, they're sacrificing their life because where they're, you know, the country that they live is, there's no, um, future for their, for themselves and for their kids. So, you know, they, they, you know, uh, the United States is, is the land of opportunity. You know, that's why the Statue of Liberty, you know, that's a big icon in the world. Uh, so, you know, they come here, but you know, um, they just want to have a better meal. And we've got a miniature Statue of Liberty right here in Des Moines over at the state Capitol. It's a much smaller version, it's much and it's smaller. not sitting on water. It's sitting on a on a sea of grass, but it's um, it's still symbolic to me of the uh, of the of the universal enthusiasm that historically our country has shown to newcomers. And here in Iowa, I mean, we have a proud history of being a welcoming society. You probably don't know much about uh, Bob Ray. Maybe you do, Governor Bob Ray. No, um, would have been back in the seventies, early eighties. But he was, uh, he was um, a tremendous friend of immigrants from uh, Vietnam, Southeast Asia, who were fleeing war and various, you know, other, other types of uh, distress that accompany that. And um, he partnered with churches and nonprofit groups to, um, to resettle them here in Des Moines, in Iowa. And, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and he's still noted for He's still much loved by the, uh, by the Southeast Asian community. For that, um, you know, and, and then compare that with Steve King, who just can't say enough horrible things about immigrants. Yeah, that's the, um, uh, yeah. The Republican Party, you know, it's been embarrassed right now, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the Republican voters can uh, vote someone that, like you said, at least doesn't embarrass them on a on a daily basis. Well, and they know that. I mean, and they are actively trying to recruit 
Latinos to embrace the Republican you know, platform. And to do that, of course, they have to distance themselves from their history of being very anti-immigrant. And they're trying to do that, but then they've got the Steve Kings of the world who keep dragging them back in a direction that, uh, that the others are trying to abandon. It seems to be that way. Uh, the Republican Party, I'm, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. I can't vote yet. Um, mm. Hopefully one day I will. Um, but, you know, they do. They do need to start. Uh, you would think that after the presidential election, they would learn some sort of lesson and, you know, that, you know, at least because of the vote, you know, let's, you know, uh, try to, um, you know, uh, you know, help out the Latino community, but not even be for convenience that, you know, he's doing it. I don't know what his strategy is, but it's, it's definitely not, you know, uh, getting any uh, favoritism from, from the Latino community. And, you know, it's, it's, it's good to remind him and maybe every Republican uh, that is uh, anti-immigrant that there's a big number of voters. A lot of the Latinos in this country are uh, legal to vote and they're U S citizens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the Latino vote matters and it counts and it showed in the presidential election. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, uh, you know, King, King has continued to win because he's never been challenged in a Republican primary. Uh, remember now, you know, Governor Branstad, who is now uh, considering his sixth term as governor, the closest challenge he ever received was from a former congressman from Northwest Iowa, Fred Grandy. If you've ever seen The Love Boat, there's a character called Gopher. That's our, that was our Congressman Grandy, uh, who was, again was a moderate Republican and, and, um, and uh, much more likable in many ways, I thought, than, than uh, Governor Branstad. He provided Branstad the closest challenge Branstad ever had. No Democrat came anywhere near as close to beating Branstad as his fellow Republican did in that primary. And, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why there's not more of a lesson in that for Republicans as well. You know, when you get a when you get somebody who's extreme, and I would argue that Branstad is extreme too, but not um, he, he doesn't he he doesn't spout off the crazy talk that Steve King does. He's not as he's not as easy of a target, and, and for that reason, I'm surprised that uh, that King has never had an opponent. He's an easy target. I think Republicans are just afraid to take him on, but maybe that's changing. Maybe maybe with the le the recent crazy talk. Uh, and with the movement of the Republican Party toward a more centrist position on things like immigration, on um, on uh, marriage equality, hopefully on climate change, maybe with that movement continuing, there will be some uh, some, um, you know, some interest in seeing him have a have a primary opponent. What are Republicans for? Um, what are they? What are they pro? I'm, I, I, it seems you to ask. me, right. It seems to me that they're anti a lot of things, and and uh, I think that America is in a new era now. It's it's a, it's in a new age, and and they seem to not want to catch up to the times, um, you know. And uh, you know the the reason why you know we're doing this rally is to uh, you know uh, empower uh, our Latinos and uh, uh, rally them and uh, to go out there and vote whenever. Uh, there's someone like him running mm -hmm. because I think that, uh, you know, the, the biggest one is the president, you know, election. And they think that that's the one that they have to vote for. But they have to remember that the the, the senators and the uh, congressmen are the ones that are, uh, you know, uh, representing the people mm -hmm. of, of Iowa for in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're good people and uh, that's needless to say we're educated um, we are hardworking. Uh, there's lawyers. There's uh, <laughs> everything yeah. that you that you want. The Latino yeah, and, and, you know, of course, King, King doesn't think you're hardworking. He uh, he uh, he he he, re he compared uh, I think Mexicans in particular to you know a dog sleeping in the corner. So, <laughs> I, so. I really hope people will go to my Facebook page. I draft a moderate Republican to beat Steve King. Uh, let's start circulating that far and wide. Let's come up with some names. I mean, seriously, uh, you, you, there's some there's some very reasonable, moderate, and even I, I don't even mind. For example, what, what about Christopher Rance, former Speaker of the House? I mean, he and I didn't get along all the time. The guy's bright. He's he is um, compared to King. He's very moderate. He's probably in the moderate to conservative camp. He absolutely would not embarrass Iowa on a regular basis 
or maybe he'd find some less extreme ways of doing it. But he, he would be he would be a breath of fresh air compared to this guy. And and I uh, that, I just throw that out there as one idea. Um, you know, maybe a conversation with Art New and Carol, the former lieutenant governor. Um, maybe a conversation with Art would be productive in terms of trying to, you know, brainstorm other possibilities. But clearly something needs to happen. And something is happening when it comes to the whole issue of immigration reform. There's a great rally being planned tomorrow at 2 o'clock, I believe, at the uh, Iowa State Capitol building, at the, I believe on the west side. That's that's right. There's going to be, it's a rally. There was a march uh, last uh, um, 15th of uh, June, and this is just a gathering. Uh, there's going to be music. There's going to be um, activities for children. Uh, there's going to be speakers. Um it, it should be fun and, uh, you know, uh, uplifting uh, that we need uh, a voice um, and, you know, we would like for Iowans to join us mm. and, um, you know, pay attention and, and take it uh, uh, to heart what the words that this man uh, is using because they are very offensive and they're not true. Right. Well, I think most people know that. Uh, including John Boehner and Eric Cantor. So, uh, Amner, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having Amner me. Amner Martinez, folks. Uh, Boehner since he was 10. Uh, a productive, uh, you know, intelligent, um, non-drug transporting, uh, non-calfs looking like cantaloupes, uh, <laughs> member of the uh, local community. Uh, he'll be at the uh, rally for immigration reform this coming uh, Saturday. That's tomorrow at 2 p.m on the west side of the state capitol. Uh, again, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, folks, when we come back, we're going to talk about, well, it's our, it's our weekly feature, Climate Beat. We're going to talk about um, farmers who are saying, quote, we've never seen anything like this, as they describe the, uh, the fluctuation between flood and drought, and then back to drought, perhaps. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an unprecedented situation. We're going to talk about why and what it means. We're also going to talk a little bit about Obama's... Um, Again, lack of ability to grasp the climate issue as the crisis that it is. Again, stick around. Two-minute break here. We'll be right back. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought a long couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I am Administrative Manager. I am the Senior Technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. <laughs> 
Keep going though, I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to the Fallon Forum. That's Max Wellman and the Max Wellman Trio. Bring us back to our conversation here. Again, folks, the uh, Immigration Reform Rally at the State Capitol tomorrow, Saturday, 2 p.m. on the west side in the uh, West Terrace, uh, Terrace Park. Uh, that should be a good event and, again, an important event and probably one that may see increased attendance because of the crazy talk we have unfortunately been, uh, been uh, uh, compelled to listen to from uh, Congressman Steve King. Um, I do want to talk about the uh, our, our, our climate beat today is going to focus on the effects of climate change on agriculture and some comments from the president that caused me some concern. But first, we're going to uh, stick with the uh, theme of focusing on issues relevant to immigration reform. And we're going to welcome Ying Sa to the program. Hello, Ying. How are you? Hello, this is Ying. Hi, Ying. It's Ed Fallon here. How are you? Good. Hey, um, we are uh, we're talking about immigration reform. Uh, most of the program so far, uh, Steve King gave us plenty of reasons to uh, discuss it. There's also but a big. I'm not very good with that. Really, don't bring me that one. Let's focus on the business side. Yeah, no, I'm going to. Yeah, that's that was that was my. We 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 focused on the political side. We talked about the immigration reform policy uh, debate that's heating up, and also the uh, activities at the Capitol this weekend. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's um there are a lot of folks here. Uh, in this country, new arrivals um, who may not understand the business climate as well as they want to, as, as well as they need to. And there is, um, there's an event, an annual event coming up that has been instrumental in helping so many people understand what they need to do to move their dream forward from just a dream to an economic reality. Mm -hmm. That sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. And you have, uh, that's going to be November 9th this year, the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit. Right. There is a summit, a one-day summit from 9 to 4 o'clock, and uh, 15 very practical, down-to-earth um, business seminars that teaches anyone who doesn't know anything about business and to the level that you really do have an action plan. And that's what we're doing every year since, night, since 2008. So they say that uh, folks who want to put together a business should put together a business plan. And I have, I've actually done a business plan before, and I know how much work, it depends on what you're doing, but it can mm -hmm. be a very complicated, very involved process. And is that something that people attending the IES can come away with as some understanding of how to put together their business plan? Right. We actually do have a seminar like that, but let me tell you, it is not about how you're going to write 32 pages overnight, and so you become a business entrepreneur. And our way of understanding business plan, a lot of times business plan need to be on a piece of paper like a document is what the third party wants you to do, like the bank. Before they fund you, the underwriter need to read your plan and understand you can do it so they fund you. But for real entrepreneurs, especially immigrant entrepreneurs, if they don't really, they're not good with spelling every word of English and they just have a great business idea. And that really what we call it is a business plan. So you just have to tie your great ideas down to action items for yourself. And that's what we are talking about, how to make a plan and execute it and mm -hmm. in your own mind. And we, we, okay. we talk about a virtual business plan that is as good as a documentation. Now there's, there's, there's lots of, uh, lots of changes every year laws change. And even if you may have, you know, been familiar with what happened a few years ago, there's still things that happen that are happening now that, that you need to catch up on. I, for example, the Affordable Care Act, uh, mm -hmm. how businesses relate to health care for their employees. Uh, that is a huge change. And I imagine that will be something that gets discussed at this year's conference. Right. That's another seminar we have. And it's Healthcare Affordable Care Act 
how does that impact your business and yourself? That's exactly how the title works on the seminar. And we really um, are a group of people, and we know what immigrant entrepreneurs or small business owners would like to know. Then we tie the topics and the content to find the suitable speakers for that. So we're definitely driving for what you need to know. So for anybody who wants to go into 2014 with some mental preparation of changes in our finance world, they really should come to IES. Yeah. Now you've got uh, you've got tax change. I mean, every year, uh, in some years more than others, tax yes, law will change as well. Right. What what right. are, uh, are people looking at? Some significant tax changes going into 2014 that you know, that they would want to know about as Actually they going into 2013. So because oh, right, when we sure. go over the 13 and we the taxes and for people joint uh, joint couple, if you file tax return. You have a earning earned income over two hundred fifty thousand, and you are looking at paying additional taxes. The aggregate number of that additional tax is three point eight percent plus nine percent. So that gives what four point seven percent. So roughly speaking, five percent of increase on some taxpayers who are really needing to get their tax planning done before the end of this year. So if they're if in your if anybody in their mind thinking they're good with their taxes, let me tell you and 2013 is going to change the mm, landscape right. of every wealthy individual in the country. Okay, well that excludes me, but uh <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely, yes. So I um, confirm that. <laughs> so uh on a, now, last year again, how many people showed up at the uh, conference? How many 400, people? 400, 400, uh, around 460, to be exact, 467. And at any given time, we had about uh, 400. Wow, that's that's a pretty good turnout. Yeah, it, and, it's getting crowded, but that just tells you the need. Yeah, and it's so, really- and most people are coming there with, I mean, I mean, did you get folks who already have their own business who show up who want, again, additional help or want to yeah, catch up on changes have in the law? Folks, um, absolutely. They have their business and they're running their business and they showed up before and then they show up again. We have folks there every year. This become the regular activities they, they would participate because our classes and our issues uh, for each year is different. So they always have something new to need to catch up. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, now, one other question that comes up, I mean, people say, okay, I, I like the idea of the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit. I'm not an immigrant myself. I could probably still benefit from some of the information that would be shared. Um, is, it, is this open to people who may not be new arrivals? Sure. And it definitely open. Let me tell you why it is actually uh, had a name of Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit. And the need for knowing the U.S business system, the needs for knowing nothing about business to a business entrepreneur. So that transition of a human, and we see a lot in the newcomers. So that is why it has been defined to target this group of people, having them coming in to learn so they can get out of welfare system and become an independent entrepreneur. Yeah. But if you are born here, and you should enjoy the benefit of no language barrier. Uh, and but if you were born here, your parents were school teachers the whole their life. You never heard of any business terms at home. Right. Then you were as well. You were as good as the new immigrants who right. want to start the business. Yeah. Just really, it it is where you start from zero, go to hundred. Mm -hmm. So you should not be considering whether you are immigrants or not. And I guess you're immigrating, you're immig you're immigrant yourself into a business world. Right. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Where uh, if you're, if you're coming into the business world from any other background that is kind of a, a very different one, then yeah, you're, you're, you're an immigrant yeah. of sorts into a new profession, a new, a new yep. way of uh, working and acting. Uh, and I, you know, I, I love being in business for myself. It's, it's challenging. You work, you work hard. Uh, mm -hmm. You, you, there's a, it's not as easy as getting a paycheck, you know, delivered to you every two weeks, but there are a lot of satisfactions to it. And I think more and more people are understanding the uh, satisfaction that comes with, with being able to do, uh, to be in business for themselves, to know that you can take your idea, your dream, your, your passion and turn it into something that makes, you know, makes a living for you as well. 
Great. So, the, so one of the seminar we talk about, how do you know you're making money? And are you ready to expand? Some people, and they really did not make money, but they are they're, they have no fear to spend money and hiring new people, then realize that they can't even pay their payroll taxes. Mm. So, you know, those kind of things are talked about at the seminar. So don't look at your bank seeing the money is yours because you might be running your cash really fast. Right. Bank so or credit. Are your, yeah, your inventory money and you need to save them. So we have classes to teach people how to uh, jumpstart, then how to maintain it, and how to create a legacy of what you created. So those are all very good uh, business tips and you won't get anywhere else but people who are just here to make sure that you know how to do business. That's what we are talking about. Yeah. So out of, out of last, again, last year, about 400 people, well, 460 people altogether came to either all or part of uh, the conference at Drake University. How many, I mean, maybe you have a way of tracking this, but how many people who attended came out of that with a new business idea or, oh. or were able to help jump, jumpstart an existing yeah, yeah, business? Yeah. We actually have a very solid data, and oh, I don't have 2012 yet because we're still wait. We're still gathering sure. how many people started business after the 2012 event. But in 2011, after we finished November 2011, we waited till October 2012. There were 120 businesses got set up here in the Secretary of a State office by the attendees of this group. So one, okay. out of, one out of every four people in attendance right. started a new business after the conference. Right. So they may wow. be already having a business. They started a second one. So, But the, the fact is, this group of people are going out creating businesses. And I want to bring a very interesting fact to you, Ed. And this is, this is fascinating to me, and I think it will be really making people excited. And in past 30 years, 30 years ago, when our parents' generation, when they started the business, it is more of a legacy business to make money. You take your time and you grow the business, then you make money. So nobody is an overnight millionaire that fast. But in today's world, and we got to realize that a lot of business people can become an overnight millionaire and very fast. And for that, for that reason, small business is no longer what we define as starting small, give them 30 years time, then they can become our client because we are expensive company, we need wealthy clients. And the, the climate changed. You could get a person with $600 starting up money, and then next year they become $3 million sales, mm. internet sales company. Right. Okay. Right. So the, the millionaire is created every day in this country. Probably and they're all they're all coming from very small amount of investment. Yeah. So look at these people who set up businesses today. You don't know. Tomorrow they are millionaires. So I think it's a place where any business would discover their leads. Even a and talk show even a talk show host? Oh, not including you, Matt. <laughs> yes. Figure out some really attractive topic and then tell people to pay before they can listen. There okay. you go. Well, maybe maybe Steve King has helped me out there. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> well, I really hope I, did, I, I didn't get a, a chance to listen to what he said. I'm pretty sure. It's a good topic, yeah. Well, it is a good topic. It's unfortunate that we have to have that conversation. But again, this is really good. It's, this is very positive. Um, and again, it's open to anybody who wants to uh, wants to move forward with their dream. Uh, and again, targeted to the immigrant community because, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, that's unfamiliar when you come to this country, when you're dealing with a new culture, a new sure. climate of uh, business. And so uh, it's exciting to hear, though, that one out of every four people who attended last year started a business. Uh, that's amazing. That's uh, what, about 120 businesses. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty good. That's, uh, I mean, we're only, yep. we're, we're only getting 31 businesses out of the 18 million we're investing in Facebook. So that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good uh, return on investment there, I'd say. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think so. And we have every business's list. And when we, um, in fact, we give this list to, to governor and he actually signs Congratulations of um, certificate to the new business who set up through uh, IES event. So it's really, uh, it's a very solid data. We literally have everybody's name on the list. And it is exciting to see how willingly 
people are wanting to be independent and to be wealthy with their own effort. So I really, I want to see that to be a mentality in the community rather than everybody trying to figure out how to get the best welfare out of the country. Great. Well, Ling Yang, I really want to thank you for joining us. And again, we'll have you on once more, at least before the start of the uh, Immigrant please, Entrepreneur yeah. Summit. Should we tell people how to register our yes. event registration? Yes, please. And uh, they can definitely call my office. And our number here is 515-288-3188. We are Community CPA. And, or they can go online to register. That website is www.iesusa.org. That is IES official website and the information are on it. And you can register as an exhibitor or attendee or okay. a sponsor. So there's many, many ways to get to get to be part of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's uh, IESUSA.org or call 288-3188, 288-3188. And, and Ying, one more question. What is the cost for the uh, day-long conference? The day-long, con- day-long conference is $35 for participate and wow. 350 for exhibitor. And the sponsorship level is different, ranging from 1000 all the way to 30000 But for somebody who wants to just, you know, learn how to start their business, $35. That's it. That's, that's, their some, meal that's amazing, cost. yeah. And um, uh, obviously, we don't count on making any profit on that. But if people purchase the ticket, we really ask them to come yeah. to finish their food because we are a group of people against waste. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, Ying Sa, folks, with Community CPA and Associates, joining us to talk about the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit coming up this fall, November 9th, at uh, Drake University in the Olmsted Building. Uh, again, Ying, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Ed. And as you might expect, this segment of our show brought to you by, sponsored by the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit. I want to thank uh, Ying and all the work she and others are doing to bring that uh, event to a reality. I also want to thank some of my other business supporters, including Tally's Restaurant, Bar, and Catering in Beaverdale. Uh, great food, very creative menu. Robert Sanda is quite the artist when it comes to his, uh, his ideas about culinary practice. Uh, check out the uh, rooftop seating, also the seating on the si- sidewalk. Uh, I-, I love the uh, I love being outdoors for a great meal, and this is a great time of the year to do it at Tally's. I also want to thank uh, the Story County Veterinary Clinic and Dr. Kim Holding. Uh, Kim is mostly Kim mostly practices in Story County, but I've known her to come down to Des Moines and service people's animals here in Des Moines as well. I also want to thank Sergeant's Garage at Sixth and College, where Graham Gormley has serviced four generations of Fallon Mobiles. And if you're looking for a home or business to buy or sell in Newton, give Dan Kelly a shout. Dan's a state representative, but in his spare time, he's also a real estate agent. That's Dan Kelly's real estate business. Again, all all the details you could possibly want about these great supporters of this program are on the Fallon Forum website. That's www.fallonforum.com. When we come back, we're going to wrap up today's conversation by talking a bit about climate change how it's impacting Iowa agriculture, and also how President Obama's comments recently about priorities, about the focus of his administration, could have been a little bit stronger. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little, until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Well, good morning. This is the 7th of June in the Lord's year 2010, and this is day uno, one, of webcastonelive.com. We will begin with Max World Live with my special guest, Tom Coates, in just a minute. There's Tom. Howdy. And uh, we will be live for the very first time on Webcast One Live.
day we're going to look back on this and say, gosh, remember that old day in history? Wonder where Walter Cronkite was. He must have been around hanging there too. But actually, it's the beginning of Webcast One Live. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Rob Spearman and everybody who's put together this project together. And uh, we're ready to go live now. So thanks for listening to MaxWorldLive.com. I can't tell you that it's going real well from time to time, but it is going. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Adams, uh, what a great musician. She's got a whole uh, whole new CD of her material, and uh, maybe uh, Maddie will help us pick out some tunes that we can play, give you a little bit of sen- a little sense of her variety. All right, so we have a little bit of time left here, not much. We have a great weekend coming up here in Des Moines, including the Italian Festival. Always a fun time. Uh, climate change. Um, I think some of us are expecting more from the president. In his speech this week where he um, rightfully criticized Republicans for an, a, quote, endless parade of distractions. Um, and he also called on Congress to work with him to buck up the country's lackluster economy. Okay, the economy could use some help, yeah. But um, what troubled me and what troubled some others is that he is still not grasping the central, you know, the central importance of the climate crisis. Um, in this speech, he, um, he had um, intended to use it as part of a sustained campaign to shift Washington's focus to the economy. And again, you know, I, I understand the importance of talking about jobs, about growing businesses uh, and, and, and good jobs. But, but, but that, that's, you, we've got to get off that as the central conversation when we are dealing with a crisis. Climate change it's not just another issue. It is a crisis. And if we deal with it appropriately, the economy will improve. Jobs will grow. New businesses will come about. I mean, the, the potential for employment uh, through doing the right thing on climate change is, is unimaginable. And yet the president still, again, he should just shift the focus to the, to the climate issue and then talk about jobs within that context. Um, he lamented, the president lamented that average Americans <clears throat> are being left behind. Fair enough. He'd, um, he'd used, he he decided to take to the bully pulpit after several months in which his administration has dealt with the fallout of natural disasters. I think that's interesting. A failed push to tighten gun laws and a barrage of criticism from Republicans over the targeting of political nonprofit groups by the IRS, you know, and the bombing in Benghazi. I mean, yeah, Republicans have been parading out a bunch of issues that really are not top priorities. But yeah, the fallout, the key, the, the, what grabbed my attention there was the fallout from natural disasters. That should have been your cue, Mr. President, to launch into a conversation about climate change. All right, so um, on the climate change front, we've seen phenomenal shifts here in Iowa in the last couple of years. Drought last year, the wettest spring on record this year, and then... As one farmer, Mark Kenny, who was quoted in a recent story about this, said, What a deal. You go from three weeks ago and the wettest conditions this ground has ever seen to worried about it being hot and dry. You know, now we've had some rain the past couple of days, and maybe that will help us out enough. But crops, you know, I mean, the, um, the, uh, I, I've seen the, the corn leaves starting to uh, stress out because of the heat, uh, curling up. Um, maybe what we had in most parts will be enough, but again, farmers have never seen this sort of thing. You know, we're used to bizarre weather. We're used to, you know, heavy storms and we're used to dry periods, but what we're not used to is this incredible shift from dry to wet back to dry. And I have no doubt that we're going back to wet again. If not right away, then probably soon. Anyway, it's something we need to wrap our minds around because this is, uh, this is it folks. Welcome to the new climate era. 
I want to thank all of my guests today, Ying Sa, Amnir uh, Martinez. I want to thank Maddie Kane, my producer. I want to thank Webcast One Live for providing this studio. I want to thank all of my business supporters. And again, check out my website to get more information about the businesses that make this show possible and thank them by supporting them. I also want to thank the Iowa chapter of the Sierra Club and Physicians for Social Responsibility and the Great March for Climate Action. I'll be back on Monday. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.